Tonight, county lines drug dealers on the streets of Britain. Yeah, there you go. Under lockdown, it's become bolder than ever. That is how blatant it is. It's a ruthless business that exploits vulnerable children. My phone rings. CJ's been shot. And I just remember being at the hospital. He had bandages on his head, and it was blood everywhere. Three minutes. Panorama spent a year following one of the country's busiest police forces. <laughs> Arresting street dealers. We found the Holy Trilogy, drugs, cash, phones. And targeting the suppliers, bringing misery across the country. This is not a glamorous lifestyle. This is horrendous, violent. And if you get into it, it's very hard to get out of it. It's 4 a.m. 150 officers from Kent and two other police forces are taking part in an operation codenamed Zeal. Part of a huge operation, this one. And hopefully, we'll get text and run of people bringing some drug dealers. So, we're going to address in Dartford today as part of a big operation, uh, over 40 warrants being executed over the next day or so, targeting uh, county line drug dealers in Kent. A county line is a drug dealing network, often with a city based dealer distributing illegal drugs to smaller towns. Fighting it needs a joined up approach. Most of the county lines we're dealing with uh, come out of London. So we're leading a three force operation here today. It's us, the Met, and British Transport Police. County lines gangs sell their drugs through phone dealing lines. Crack and heroin are the most popular drugs. Profits from a single line can be £800,000 a year, and each gang will violently defend its turf. We'll check out 20 past five, all call signs in position, run through it with the Met and the bonds commander on the ground, and then we'll get the uh, strike from there. Yes, sir. Three minutes. County line drug dealers are a sophisticated, organised, incredibly violent group of individuals. We're trying to get to the snakes here. We're trying to find out who's bringing these drugs in. They're the people we're really after. Silver to bronze, ground on all units. Strike, strike, strike. In all, 18 people are arrested, including six who police believe are big players. When we first started looking at the phenomenon of county lines, which was back um, probably about seven years ago now, only seven forces in the country were actually affected. As of today, every police force in the country is affected. Last week, Boris Johnson reaffirmed his commitment to tackling drug dealers. In the last 18 months, law enforcement agencies have been promised an extra £65 million to target county lines money that's allowed Kent Police to double the size of its county lines and gangs teams. My name's Rob Hemsley, I'm a detective. I'm one of the six investigators on the team, and I've been working here for about three and a half years now. The drug users used to see them every morning, getting on the train, going up to London, buying their drugs, coming back. Mm. The whole system's changed now. The drugs are being brought into the town. My name's Mike Williams. I'm a disruption officer for the county line gangs team. It's our job to go out there take the runners that are selling the drugs, getting any evidence that we can provide to start the investigation process. That usually starts by gathering information from the street dealers, known as runners. Mike Williams has worked this beat for more than a decade and knows many of them by sight. We go to Chatham. The drug users know it as Brown Town. Brown, which is a word for heroin. Anywhere where there's shops or a shopping centre, it, it seems to attract people that are using drugs. They will go into the town centres, shoplift, sell their items, then they will go and buy their drugs. Mike and his team are based in Medway, but they also have to keep an eye on dealers crossing over from London. Outside of London, the southeast of England has the highest rate of drug seizures in the UK. Yeah, in Kent, yeah, it's getting bad, especially in the north of the county, up near Dartford. People come across, do the street robberies, jam back on the train into the Met. And they're all part of gangs, it's initiation. So they're new to the gang, go out and do a robbery, get some phones, and that leads them to other things. 
There's a road called Piggy Alley. It's pretty called Piggy Alley because there's always police up and down it. But we get a lot of dealing going down. It's like a service road. Lots of little alleyways off it. And there's always people skulking in and out. That's what I think, isn't it? Like a rocket. Right, yeah. Keep on going, Parky. Okay. Mike Williams has just spotted someone he's arrested before. A runner called Michael Brockett. Essentially, they'd exchange you to take in place. I thought you're all right. Let's have a quick chat. It's all right. Just keep your hands out of your pockets for us for two minutes. Around that pocket, mate. You've been detained for the purpose of drug search, OK? Mm -hmm. Have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, whereabouts? In the bag. What's that in your bag for, then? I got a meat cleaver over the head. So that's, that's for your protection, is it? OK. We've got some crack cocaine there, haven't we? We found a uh, quantity of uh, heroin and crack cocaine. You've got the white here, which is your crack, and then you've got the brown, which is the heroin. In it. The runners are the most junior and most Sorry. exposed yeah, members of the county line line's line. networks. As Michael Brockett is arrested, his phone is also seized. The phone line has a nickname. It helps those in the chain above build their brand but hide their identity. You've got his phone ringing off the hook. Got this number here, Ace. We know that this is a drug dealing network that's operating within the Medway towns. We'll be getting downloaded to see what content we've got on it. Police hope that data from the Ace phone will help identify the distributor who's supplying the runners with drugs. They're known as line holders. We want to take out the people that are holding the line because they're the bigger threat and they are harder to replace. They could be in control of several lines and several runners, so it would take out more people in the long run. Information gathered from the Ace Line phone will be fed into Kent Police's monthly review, where it's decided which county lines are going to be prioritised. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Mike Worrell. I'm a detective superintendent in charge of the gang and county line teams here in Kent. According to the latest figures from the National Crime Agency, there are around 1,000 county lines in operation across the UK. Here in Kent, the number of lines is at near record levels. At the minute, we've got 65 county lines in total. And I think the highest we've had is 67 from memory, so it's obviously very busy. We'll be working around the intelligence, and obviously that picture changes on a daily, yeah. daily weekly basis. There's street disruption officers go out gathering the intelligence. That intelligence is looked at through a matrix, which then identifies which scores are given to which um, county line. This is a provisional score of 56. This matrix takes the complex web of intelligence that officers have gathered and turns it into a number. The higher the number, the more dangerous the county line. My name is Olivia Lee. I'm a civilian intelligence analyst. My main job is to control the matrix and the scoring for the county lines. The firearm was located at one of the safe houses that we did warrants at. We're looking for vulnerability. That drug dealer has a young child. Uh... If they're using juveniles, using vulnerable adults, they're linked to weapons, and we will then score based on that. The ACE line, a provisional score of 36. The higher the score drives the top five, which is what drives the direction of the force. Scoring just 36 means that the ACE line isn't going to be prioritised this month. Police have another target, the GEM line. This is a drugs network with several line holders and teams of teenage drug runners. The line is linked to knife as well as gun crime. How big is the GEM line? Oh. Big into the hundreds, the yeah. thousands, easily. Jim was our number one, and Jamel Fornalia. He's what we say was a higher level of drug dealer. He scored 81. 81 is the highest we've had. Jamel Fornalia sit higher up and contacts the line holder, who then contacts the runners. So he's the head of some of the networks that we've been looking at. Jim's a supplier supplying drugs in and around the Medway areas and London to um, other lines.
caught him red-handed. He was found trying to flush um, some bundles of crack cocaine down the toilet. At one of the other addresses linked to him, we recovered about half a kilo of crack cocaine and heroin and a, a firearm which was loaded. Fornilier is under arrest, but the county line's network he supplied is still operating. Under him is an 18-year-old line holder who lives in Rochester. OK, thank you, guys. Uh, today we're here to execute a drugs warrant in Rochester. A male by the name of George Dempsey is believed that he is controlling the county line known as Avon. Several unmarked police vehicles are converging on Dempsey's home. Yeah, Luke, if, if you think it's here, mate, we're, we're trying to put a stop in. Officers in one of the other cars spot Dempsey on the street. We think, we think yeah, he's... Yeah, we're just moving in closer to his sister, just in case he makes up. I think he's come out the address. He's there. He's all right. He's making it off. No, he's making it off, making it off. Stop. Tell ya! You're under arrest. Being concerned is Clive, can't say dogs. You do not have to say anything. We may harm and defeat. You do not make two and question something like Riley Paul. You understand? Police! Police! What we've got here is going to be a quantity of heroin, which is uncut. We've got a quantity of crack cocaine here. He's got two mobile phones on him, and one of the mobile phones is what we call the job line. We've got bulk messages, basically, saying that he's got heroin and crack cocaine for sale. Here, you've got loads and loads of numbers, all the same number, ending in 529. We believe this to be the Avon drug line. So he's going to be taking this out to potential new customers. Also, we found a large uh, quantity of cash, approximately over £1,000. Bear in mind, the guy doesn't work. Uh, he's got a lot of questions to answer. What we found is what we call the Holy Trilogy. Drugs, cash, and obviously phones on him. And we've got the full shebang, so yeah, it's a, it's a great result for us. George Dempsey has a learning disability and vulnerable young people are often coerced into selling or distributing drugs by those higher up the county line's network. The younger they are, the easier it is for the gangs to groom them. Hi, my name's Corey, and this is my dance. He was an excellent dancer. He'd been going to dance school from he was five. Do you remember the group Diversity? He was with them for about three years. He just loved to dance. He loved to entertain. So we was going down that line. But things started to go badly wrong for Corey, known to his family as CJ. At 10, he was diagnosed with a learning disorder. His school couldn't cope with his behaviour and he was excluded. Then at 13, CJ was groomed by an East London drugs gang. It began with them buying him chicken and chips after school. It wasn't long before they demanded something in return. I'm calling him, and he goes, Mum, these boys have asked me to sell drugs. And I, my next question was straight away, where are you? As soon as I saw the drugs, I said, I want you to take them. And he was like, no, 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 Mum, you don't know these boys. I said, listen, if there's ever a moment in life that you should trust me, it's this moment right now. I've got you. Don't worry, I'm taking this. CJ's mum says she disposed of around £600 worth of drugs. £600 that he would now have to pay back. As much as I can say, OK, it's dealt with on my side, in his mind it's not dealt with because he now feels like he owes money for these boys. He wanted to get rid of that debt. He went missing. He went to county lines, as they say. When he returned, he had dark eyes. He looked like he hadn't bathed. He didn't look like the son that I was raising. Just turned 14, CJ and three other young people were targeted on a street corner by a gunman in a stolen Range Rover. My phone rings. CJ's been shot. 
Do you have to touch my face like that? No. Okay, yeah. And I just remember being at the hospital. Yeah. And I told him I was there. I told him I loved him and I'm going to be here for when he wakes up. CJ died from his injuries the next day. No one has been arrested for his murder, but police say the case remains open. long before it's business as usual. I don't think there's been any difference in relation to the busyness of the market. Just because there's a global pandemic on, people have still got an addiction and they've got to feed that addiction. This guy in front of us is a user. Someone up in that alleyway just popped out, looking up and down. Are we going to score? Robust back. I've been nicking people in this alleyway for years. Yeah, there you go. Joe Cass with him. I think he's chatting equal. We, they're both drug users. He's giving him money there, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Done it. Completely oblivious to us. Look at that, it's complete. There you go, there's cash. That is how blatant it is. Didn't get close to him. No. Kept his meters distance, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> We're on an operation today for a bigger player. We'll go back and get him at another day. Something that blew my mind is we stopped a guy. He didn't know that there was an actual global pandemic. He didn't know. He just thought it was just quiet. Just shows you how far detached these people get. As the year has gone on, we've gone back to normal. Initially, it was harder to gain intelligence. Now, the intelligence is just as rapid as what it has been. The County Lines team has now discovered more about one of the networks it disrupted before the first lockdown last year. So after the arrest of George Dempsey, we have, through phone work, worked out that George Dempsey was in contact with a well-known male by the name of which would suggest was supplying George Dempsey. He has been in prison on multiple occasions for drug offences. He's been known to us from about 2008. He's gone from being a low-level street dealer and worked his way up the ranks. According to the intelligence, he's been in prison for it. On two occasions that I've dealt with him, the first one he got six years, I believe, and the second one he got 10 years. And it just shows he's, he's probably served half that sentence, and then he's come straight back out into it. Police believe their new suspect has stepped in to replace Jem Fornilier, who'd been arrested in February 2020. Unlike Fornilier, the suspect is believed to be delivering drugs himself, bringing them from London by car. So the investigation has identified that he's using this vehicle. What we can do on the MPR system is search on that number plate alone, and it will show us all the activations that he's made. He's going to be switched on, so we're going to have to think about this one. How many cars have we got? One, two, probably about four or five vehicles, hopefully. Just monitoring the movements of our subject vehicle. It shows us at 1301 by, by King's College Hospital. Ideally, what you want to do is get them in one of the narrow Medway streets that you can come in one in one and another and use parked cars and just lock them in. Lock them in. Within the last sort of 10, 15 minutes, he is down here heading towards Dulwich Village area. But in theory, that would lead on to South Circular, which they would bring down towards us. With their shift ending at 7pm and still no sign of their suspect, 
police stand down the operation. There's been a lot of manpower today, and pretty much all we've done is, is sit in the office um, waiting on um, our man to rock up. However, a few days later, police are back on the trail. The intention today is to execute a search warrant in Maidstone, and you'll search for controlled drugs, documentation related to controlled drugs, including those contained within electronic devices and any SIM cards. Don't slam doors, don't slam doors. Execute a search warrant, okay? Do you want to step up for us? Yeah. Time's 20 past five. At this time, you'll be arrested on suspicion of being concerned in supply of class A drugs, okay? Oh, I'm out of breath now, run those stairs. Although the intelligence points to the suspect being a major player, the search of the property doesn't uncover the evidence police were hoping for. The next day, he's released, but he remains a person of interest. This is not a glamorous lifestyle. This is horrendous, violent. And if you get into it, it's very hard to get out of it. Aged just 14, this girl who we're calling Ashley found out just how hard it can be. I started hanging around with people who was running their own lines, and I was watching them make an extraordinary amount of money. We're disguising her identity because she fears the gang she joined as a teenager. I had no money, I didn't have nothing. I couldn't just live off of my mum. So I went up to my friend and I said to him, how much will I get paid a week? And he says, you'll earn 600 pound a week. And I'm thinking, what? 600 pound a week, yes, please. Ashley began working as a courier, often taking drugs long distances for the gang. But when she wanted to leave, the gang had other ideas and began to torture her. After I'd been beaten with various objects, he pulled out the gun. I thought I was going to die that night. I laid on the floor and I looked. I was just looking into the sky and I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. Unlike many victims, Ashley decided to give evidence against her attackers. Found guilty on charges, including kidnap and assault, they all received long jail sentences. At their Medway headquarters, officers have been alerted to a violent new County Lines gang that's arrived from London. Calling itself the CJ Line, it's gone right to the top of the priority list. We've been made aware overnight of a video that's circulating on Snapchat, which has been uploaded by an account, CJ underscore two. It basically shows a male being tortured. <laughs> the Snapchat video was being circulated in the area of Gravesend. No, star jumps, no. Star jumps. You get down on your He's with us now. The police found him this morning. And he has injuries consistent with the assault that we've seen in the video. As well as children, County Lines gangs prey on vulnerable adults. In this case, they've subjected a 33-year-old man to a five-hour ordeal. He was cut, burned and scalded with boiling water. It's very serious making somebody do that. I mean, that's, it's one step away from killing them. Officers have used intelligence from social media to track down the suspects who uploaded the video. One of the names being batted around is a Charlie Sunter. It's that address. That's where the videos were sent from. Hello, mate. Don't know what we're going to be walking into. OK. We'll just go straight up and just do it. Right, maybe not. We'll stay up then, mate. All right, bye bye. Charlie, Charlie, 
you're under arrest for GBH. Fall to Brisbane. Why have you got a stab vest? Great big Rambo knife there. We've got multiple weapons, drugs, all sorts. Yeah, um, been successful. Um, we've got our man in custody, he was a saunter. He was in there with two other males. This was pulled out as we got into the living room. Uh, he was lucky he wasn't tasered. I think he's in real life, police and dropped it straight away. Come on, man. What's this for ITV? BBC, mate. BBC, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, my collie got bit because there was a bull mastiff bit my colleague on the leg. We've got various weapons that were located, secreted around the house. That was lifted up and that was just placed there. With that such, you wouldn't necessarily see it. The videos the gang put up on social media showed them attacking the victim with a purple knife. So this is a great bit of evidence because we think this is the knife that was used in the assault. This guy had this with him as well, so it just shows that they're, they're prepared to wear stab vests. County Lines gangs sometimes take over properties like this and use them as drug dealing dens. It's called cuckooing. This particular dress belongs to a female that we know very well. Um, she's a, a young female, has a, a severe drug addiction. Um, so this, to me, is a, is a classic victim of cuckooing. People would just come round, uh, give her some drugs to stay. They're just using the drugs to feed her habit, and they've got a place to stay for the night and uh, run and deal drugs from. Charlie Salter, which we believe to be connected to the CJ line, we've recovered this bag. When we looked in it, we found a large quantity of Class A drugs, as well as about £2,000 in cash all his documents with his name on it. It was quite funny because he was wearing a West Ham football top and on the back uh, he had initials of CJ, which is crazy, so he's like promoting his own drug trade on the back of his West Ham shirt. Since the first lockdown in March last year, the court system has struggled. Now the courts are finally beginning to catch up with the backlog of cases. Last month, Charles Saunter and two others pleaded guilty to a string of charges, including assault and drug dealing. Jamal Fournillier also pleaded guilty to drugs and firearm offences. George Dempsey is serving a two-year sentence for supplying crack and heroin. Over the last year, Kent's drug squad has made over 300 arrests and say they've reduced the number of county lines by a third to 46. There are now plans to expand the drug squad to 70 officers. They'll have no shortage of targets. It's not a war, because a war ends. It's just a constant battle. You take him out, he'll step in. And then we'll take him out, and then someone else will step in. That's the game. The true story of a Scottish mercenary and the most notorious drug lord of all. His mission, Killing Escobar. Incredible documentary streaming now on BBC iPlayer. But stay right there, the big day's arrived in EastEnders. Next. <laughs>